Hello, it's the Elfie with Raw New York City on Facebook. I would like to speak to you today about staying raw in New York City in the winter or anywhere where it's cold like this, you know, in the colder climate. There are a few points that I'm going to bring up, but first I'd like to say this. For me, this is the first winter where I haven't had the need to go back to vegan, cooked or whatever. Uh, I think my body now has regulated itself or a little progress has been made because I really crave the salad, the fruits, everything, like, like if it was the summer. Um, maybe not watermelon, I don't crave that, and plus it's not in season, but you know, pretty much um, I see a difference. And I attribute this to probably uh, regulating or something, um, and I believe that then that would be the case for everyone. If you stay longer on it, you'll see that after a while it's not an issue anymore. But maybe this is more a topic for people who are starting on it and stuff. So um, the first thing you can do, of course, is to warm your food. You don't cook it, you warm it. As long as you don't go past 115 Fahrenheit or something, 118 Fahrenheit, it's going to be fine, you know, the enzyme is still alive in there. There's nothing wrong with eating, you know, warm food. Maybe you're not so into luck warm food, but if that's what's going to keep you raw and you're determined to do that, then it's a good strategy, you know, put it in the oven. You have a little, you know, thermostat and you can tell, or a little cooking thermostat you put in the soup and you put it in a pan that has a very thick bottom. That's another way, and you stir it while you warm up uh, the food. Uh, that's for soups, for example, but you can also warm up your dressings, you know, whatever you do as a dressing, you can warm it up slightly like this and then pour it on your lettuce or on your greens or on your kale or whatever. And uh, we have a recipe in France, it's like a, a warm vinaigrette of a cooked beets and, and mash or something like that. Um, I don't know if you know mash here, do we have mash? I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, it's some kind of a very tender, small, round-like leaf. Anyway, it's a very great salad if we can find it here. So it's it's a great idea to, to warm up your salad. I'm going to see if I come up with a recipe and then maybe put it on the video and stuff. That'd be cool, like a warm salad for the winter. Uh, and then, of course, you know, herb tea. To tell you the truth, I don't even need to drink herb tea this winter. It's really different. And then you get hot apple cider. You can make it yourself so you don't cook the apple juice. Um, and it's always something you can fall back on if you need a little kick and you are with friends at a coffee shop and there's nothing you can eat. Uh, it's not the end of the world if you eat one, you know, hot apple cider. Of course, it's not raw in coffee shops around the city unless it would be maybe in a raw restaurant. But So that's an alternative. Of all these, the, the herb teas are one way. And then know when you go out where you go beforehand if you can go look at the place a little bit or if you you know look at the menu and then check the place out because do you need is it kind of cold large you know and um or is it a cozy warm there's a fireplace type place you know and this way i mean you know in doubt always bring an extra sweater with you or something you know? it's important to stay warm while you eat um because you're not going to do well on eating a salad when you feel cold. And it's going to turn you off from the diet altogether. So we're not advised to do that just to force it on yourself. It has to come naturally. You know, you got to do whatever you can to take those steps so it comes naturally for the body. The body will revenge itself <laughs> if you do something like that. And um, at home, where you maybe eat the most, where you, where you eat the most, um, make sure that you are in a warm environment same thing you know i have an extra heater here but they're pretty good at keeping the heat like caribbean level here so i can walk around in little light things and dresses and all day i only have this tonight because it's hmm, close to 2 a.m uh and uh it's a little chillier here but it's still comfortable um and i'm sure a lot of buildings are pretty well heated in, in manhattan here in the winter so that's important. Just have your own, you know, sort of strategy on how to stay warm. If you're into working out, then get that blood moving. Go out there. Walk briskly in the cold. In New York, we have the beautiful, like, uh, river banks of the Hudson and the East River. You can play tennis outside. You can bike. You can run. You can walk. 
Uh, we have the High Line also, 14th Street to Chelsea. It's a great walk, you know, to take in the winter summer too, but in the winter is not busy. It's really fun. Uh, and just get, you know, that metabolism going. It's a great thing to do too. You'll see that you get less and less cold by doing things like that. Um, and then the sauna. And that's one of my favorite things to do. I do it even in the winter, uh, in the summer, but the winter is the season to do it. And uh, there, in New York here, we have two, uh, the Russian baths, two Russian baths, and there's a couple in Brooklyn as well. But in Manhattan, we get two. One on Fulton Street in Wall Street, 88 Fulton, one on 10th Street by Avenue A, between 1st Avenue and A. And that's like the West Village cult Russian baths, landmark, very funky. Not everybody like it there. I kind of like it because actually it's, you know, you bring your clay, you bring your scrub, you bring it. It's, it's just kind of being in a cavern and just brushing yourself and sweating together. And I, I find that it's the closest to like being nature, sort of urban nature. But for some people, it's too dirty, too a bit funky, and I can understand that too. But they have great heat in both places and great cold because that comes with the heat. You want to do that in the winter, hot and cold. If you can get into that program, if that's your thing, go for it. You know, some people are absolutely not into water and they don't want to go in heat. And maybe for so you have problems with like high blood pressure, you got to be careful about doing that. Then use like uh, infrared saunas or low heat saunas. Go easy to get the sweat going and open the pores. But if you don't have those conditions, Try it. You know, it's really fun. Uh, the one on Fulton Street has great dry heat. They keep the room absolutely dry. They, they are damned about it. You come with a wet towel, they kick you out, you know, type thing. On 10th Street, it's a little more lax, and there's a lot of water in practically all the room. Even the dry sauna, the Swedish room, is more or less always humid from people bringing in so much water to it. But, you know, they both get the job done of making you sweat and make the lymph, lymphatic uh, system really move. So I highly recommend that. And then you bring a brush with you or a glove, you know, but a dry brush is great. You get that at a health food store, you do one where hard, that scratch your skin a little bit, and you, you know, uh, brush your skin toward the kidney, the whole body, mostly where there's lymphatic nodes, the neck, the groin area and the, underneath the arms there and the chest area that's where most like nodes are and you brush going toward the kidneys you know always toward the kidneys toward the kidneys toward the kidneys that is very good for you you have to help the elimination organs in the winter by doing this the kidneys filter your lymphatic system your liver helps the uh, colon to release and eliminate the toxins that are in the lymphatic system, the lymphatic system being your sewage system. Uh, so you need to also be gentle to your liver and do what you need to do so your colon can work properly and the elimination can work properly. And the other system, which is the bladder and the kidneys and the skin, which is another organ very connected to the kidneys as well, uh, eliminate the toxins and all the acidity that we get from just living in the world we live in, but if we eat really well. So uh, that also, wanted, I'll put a link down there from, from uh, that incredible guy, like he's, he's a natural path. I learned a lot from him. Uh, his name is Dr. Morse, and he's got a grip on the lymphatic system like no one I've seen. And his videos are superb and fun, and he's a very, I don't like the word spiritual like that, we use that word so lightly, but he's a wonderful man, and he knows a lot. And... Uh, you know, I'll put some of his videos on, on the Ron York City page as well, but I'll put a link down there so you can check it. And, uh, he's got like 800 videos out there. You learn a lot um, from him. So those things are important to keep warm in the winter, to keep a body going, the system in balance. Um, keep juicing if you can, because that keeps the system in balance. And if the system is in balance, your glandular system will keep you you know, temperature-wise, in balance as well. So juicing is great. And I wanted to give you a tip on juicing in the winter. Uh, if you're already at a certain level of, um, 
of raw, you know, like you're not just new to it because if you take too much fruit, it may be too much. And that depends on the people. We can't really tell you experiment. But it's true. Mine um, are based in apples in the winter. I get the apples at the farmer's market. Wednesday, Friday, there is that farm. I think it's called Cababella Farm or something. They are right at 17th Street and Union Square West. They're the largest stand with all the apples. I talked to the guy. They told me they didn't spread the apples, but they cannot, you know, they're not certified organic. Um, I can address this in the other video. So anyway, those are really decent apples. Tell you the truth, I look at them and I can tell they, they're good apples. Um, they give me the feeling of being just simple, sort of not all the same shape. Some are a little bit um, uh, the, the insects that, you know, already eaten them or something. And to me, that's a sign the fruit is natural. So I take those apples as a base for my juice. I always add lemon and ginger and celery, number one veggie celery that is so alkalizing and is so high in sodium that in the winter, because you want to give a break to your kidneys, the kidney, uh, the winter is the season for the kidneys and the kidneys are like working hard. You want to help them do their, their job. And so, you know, do whatever you can, uh, like by not eating too much salt, but take your sodium intake, intake by absorbing a lot of uh, uh, celery juice and things like that. So I would say I put all the celery, Definitely the ginger and the lemon, my apple, and then one green. If I have really a need or want and, and I can afford different greens, I'll put different greens. I don't usually put cucumber in the winter. I find it better for the summer. So I put my greens will be either parsley, which is excellent for the kidneys, Parsley, all kinds of parsley. I alternate between the parsley, the cilantro, the flat leaf parsley. Sometimes I'll put dill. I love the taste, and dill is excellent as well. I'll put uh, another green I put is um, uh, the dandelion. That's another panacea herb right there. If I had one herb to pick, that's the, the dandelion because it cleans and it, it nourishes the liver and the kidneys. Uh, it's a great plant. You can even make salad. I will make a little recipe of dandelion salad. As a matter of fact, I will post it. Uh, so I juice apples, maybe half of those three pound bags or a third of it, you know, like it's maybe six apples, right? Lemon, ginger, cilantro, parsley, or rather than the parsley, I get... Um, or celery, I mean, not cemental, celery and parsley, or celery and um, dandelion, or celery and um, cemento, celery and dill, or celery and kale, because that's like a great kale, we know, it's uh, so rich in calcium. I'm not into so much making juice with, with broccolis and things like that, but some people are. It's all the taste, personal taste. I mean, I use my intuition all the time, and that's how we should do on this diet. It's an intuitive lifestyle. There's no question. But I tell you my take on it. Some of you may resonate with that. And I love to keep it like this, simple. With one or two greens, and the rest is like lemon, ginger, and the base of apple. Apple is highly alkalizing. That's why I say go easy if you're just starting because it may be so alkalizing. You can have like a little bit of detox from eating that on, in large quantity. But me, I'll drink that maybe uh, twice a day or once a day at least. I'll make a big quantity so I have enough at the moment when I make it. And then I'll store it and I'll eat it later uh, in, at night. You know, So I have two large containers like that, like the mason jars. You know. And I said that is important to you know, keep the the things like this because people think our oh, juice it's cold but it's it's really same thing you know eat it in a warm environment and it's gonna keep regulating your body and the more you do that the more you realize that you don't need to pay attention so much to the temperature of the food uh, that you ingest to keep the inner temperature well and balanced um, and take it from somebody who has been always very cold sensitive. So I know what I'm talking about. And I wanted to say last point that I've heard of this woman called Sola something, and she's in Iceland, and she's the raw food personality in Iceland. I've heard she's like a little following. She goes on TV and so forth. And if this woman can be 100% raw in Iceland, we can do 
100% raw in New York because Iceland is brutal in the winter. I was there in the winter. It is brutal and or can be on certain days. The days I was there for, certainly were. They have beautiful geothermal pools, though. They have all the equipped to deal with their winters. But, uh, you know, I never thought people would go for a raw food diet there. Now that I see with, with this winter being different for me, I understand it. I'm like, actually, it's, it's not related. It's not, uh, you know, like you would think. So uh, that was just a little anecdote I wanted to say on the side that, uh, you know, I even thought that would be a great place to do a retreat, to, to a raw food retreat in Iceland. They have beautiful greenhouses that are powered by the geothermal pool, geothermal system of, you know, like the, the volcano basically heats the whole island. Uh, they don't use any uh, electricity uh, from a nuclear plant or any sort of like, you know, mm, fuel or oil, you know, natural gas or anything like that. They, they fuel everything from the heat from the volcanoes. And that causes, that creates an environment that's extremely pure. And for that reason, to me, it's the, one of the best places to do a raw food retreat, you know, because you can do all the tour of like geothermal pool and and then eat raw and then go back in that hot water and the, the pure air and it's actually original because usually all those um retreats are in costa rica or places like that which is really great too with all the exotic fruit but that's a different deal to me that could be interesting to look into this and and that's in the back of my mind if you're ever interested in this let me know because i know some of you have asked me question about uh, Iceland, and uh, I never connected the two, you know, the rough and the Iceland, but now I do, and that could be a fun thing. So I think that's it for tonight. My gosh, it's already, yeah, 17 minutes. Um, I thank you for listening, and um, just feel free to share with me any comment if you have any question, and remember to check the page at facebook.com slash raw New York City, and I hope to see you there. And uh, I say goodbye until the next time. Bye.